Hello children today we are going to learn animal cell culture and applications you have already learned in chapter 4 about microbial cell culture and its applications in chapter 5 plant cell culture and its applications so now we will be able to know what animal cell culture and its application is at the end of this chapter and compare it to microbial cell culture and plant cell culture objectives of part 1 video lesson to know and understand animal cell culture to differentiate the characteristics of animal cell culture with other cultures to find out how primary and secondary cultures are established to appreciate the advantages of animal cell culture to be in know how of possible disadvantages and to comprehend the features of animal cell culture topics covered introduction of animal cell culture history advantages and disadvantages features why animal cell culture primary and secondary cell lines now coming to introduction of animal cell culture process of growing animal cells under laboratory conditions is what we call as animal cell culture it is carried in in vitro that is laboratory conditions as opposed to in vivo conditions that is living or as it is in the nature it grows in 18 to 24 hours and the for the very big question why animal cell culture because it is required for the production of large glycoproteins of therapeutic value which do not grow in microbes also production of monoclonal antibodies which are highly specific and is used in the treatment of various diseases require animal cell culture gene therapy tissue engineering etc which are all in thing treatment regimens of today require animal cell culture again coming to history ross harrison first attempted animal cell culture george gay established the first human cell line hela from cervix cancer patient of henrietta lacks in 1950s Henrietta as name has come for uh, for the he h e has taken from Henrietta and l a has taken from lax coming to the advantages of animal cell culture homogeneous genetic population all the cells are genetically identical control physico chemical environment means uh physical uh, parameters like temperature ph osmolarity etc can be controlled it's available on sufficient numbers we can produce it in large quantities easy production of biopharmaceuticals any uh, biological compounds which are active and is of therapeutic value we can produce it very easily through animal cell culture cost effective screening assays we can screen a number of animal cell cultures at the same time using uh, some assays and this makes it very cost effective no ethical clearance is required if you are using living organisms like monkey or chimpanzees we need ethical clearance but for this we do not need ethical clearance easy to manipulate the genes we can add genes of our interest or delete genes which is not of significance and regulate the protein levels disadvantages small size require high sensitivity techniques to detect changes scale up is very challenging from the laboratory conditions to industrial uh, level if you want to scale up it becomes very challenging it might not represent in vivo phenotype or genotype 
uh, what we have in culture may not uh, literally mimic what we see uh, uh, in vivo conditions. Phenotype is the external appearance of an organism. Genotype is the genetic constitution of an organism. Now coming to the features, it can grow only for limited generations even in the best nutritive media. Normal cells are mortal because they, be, they die after uh, a couple of generations. They divide and fill the surface of culture vessel and then stop growing. So once it reaches the surface, it do not grow further. It exhibit contact inhibition. When one animal cell comes in contact with another surface of another cell it stops uh, growing no animal cell grows one on top of the other so this property is what we call as contact inhibition cell growth in culture is different from in vivo and transform cancer cells it lose contact inhibition so in this picture we can see normal cells uh, it has got cell cell addition it has uh, got attached to the surface of the petri plate but it uh, has uh, not lost contact inhibition uh, so no cells are seen on top of the other whereas in the case of the transformed cells we can see that it is growing on top of the other because it has lost contact inhibition coming to the primary cell cultures Primary cell cultures are dissociated from the parental tissue such as kidney or liver. Characteristics of the cells depend on the original source within the animal. Mechanical or enzymatic methods. Mechanical method includes disruption of the cells using homogenizer. Enzymatic methods use enzymes like trypsin in order to separate the cells from the given parental tissue. Maintenance of the growth of the animal cells isolated from parental tissue are called primary cell culture. And primary cell cultures can be adherent or suspension cultures. Adherent means anchorage dependent. Suspension cultures are anchorage independent. Secondary cultures. Subculturing of primary cell lines are called secondary cultures. Subculturing or splitting of cells is done periodically to provide fresh nutrients and growing space for the growing cell lines. Some cells become altered and transformed to give rise to immortal cell lines. Frequency of subculturing depends on each cell type. For example, adrenal cell line will be different from liver cell line which will be different from neuronal cell line and frequency of subculturing will be different from each of these cell lines. So secondary cultures are always formed from primary cell lines and they have chances to become transformed. Subculturing. Roos and Johns were the first to introduce proteolytic enzyme trypsin for subculturing of adherent cells. Subculturing involves the following steps. Removal of growth media. Washing the plate or the vessel that we are using for culturing. Dissociating the adherent cells enzymatically using trypsin. And diluting the cell suspension into fresh media. Adherent cultures. Anchorage dependent. They are derived from tissues or organs such as kidney which are not mobile and it adheres to the cell culture vessel. Most important thing is it is anchorage dependent and the organs are also immobile. In suspension cultures it is derived from the cells of the blood system. It is suspended in plasma. And cells do not attach to the surface of the vessel. So it is opposite to what we have seen in adherent cells. And both adherent and suspension cultures are part of primary cultures. Drawbacks of secondary culture. 
cells becomes altered and it becomes uh, transformed they become cancerous drawbacks of primary cultures are it is time consuming use of live animals or fresh tissue each time and considerable variation from one preparation to another so if i am preparing one uh, at one time and after one hour again i prepare there will be considerable variations in the preparations which will affect the data so thank you for watching this video we have uh, tried to cover the introduction features advantages and disadvantages primary and secondary cultures uh, with a special mention of subculturing technique and uh, drawbacks of uh, primary uh, cultures adherent as well as uh, suspension cultures uh, secondary cultures and uh, also uh, we have looked at uh, the features of animal cell culture so thank you once again for watching this video do give your uh, suggestions for improved performance thank you